Hello everyone, Sifu here and today we are continuing my Neo2 build series for this channel. So this build that I'm going to show today is already shown on the channel previously. The only difference is that last time, like 4 months ago, I submitted this build only showing clips of Depths of the Underworld from uh, floors 21st to 25th to show that this build is viable not only in Underworld but also in Depths of the Underworld. It is also viable by playing with Stone of Penance plus 9. So this build is pretty much focused on melee key damage and the two graces that I decided to go with are Isanigis, 7 pieces of Isanigis and 6 pieces of Nidigi's grace. Now as you can see I decided to go with 6, six pieces Nidigi's to take advantage of the melee key damage 30% and 7 pieces Isanigis to go with the cleansing prayer which I'm going to explain out in a little bit why I decided to go with the cleansing prayer instead of the finishing flare double A. So as you can see with this build we reach 53.9% uh, of melee key damage and 30 0.8% of anti skill key damage. Our core starts are 19 constitution, 200 heart, 150 courage, 48 stamina, 200 strength, and 150 magic. Now, the reason why I decided to go with these core starts is because our dachi scales with strength and heart, same as our fist. Our fist scales with strength and heart. Now, uh, if you don't feel too comfortable by only running 19 of constitution because it's not, it's not too much health, uh, you can always remove some points from heart and dump it on constitution if you would like to. Uh, we are not using ultimate heart, so that's another reason for you to change this course, course stat. Uh, but I decided to go with 200 heart and 200 strength since other the main scaling course stats for the weapons we would do more damage. Uh, as you can see, our weapons are Fists and Odachi. The reason why I decided to go with Fists is because Fists is really good to do melee key damage. It breaks enemies guard really fast and it does really good key damage against Yokai. Now our Odachi is pretty much the same. Odachi is really good to do melee key damage However, the only bad thing about these Odachi is that I wasn't able to get a Star Mystic Diet, unfortunately. So if you have one with Purity and Star Milky Damage, that would be really, I'm um, sorry. It's, if you have an Odachi with Purity with Mystic Diet Odachi, that would be really awesome. Other than that, um, I would say that the other star effect important will be life frame uh, after skill damage or melee attack. Now, the reason why I decided to go with 7 pieces is an E is because it grants you the Trinity status enhancement, which means that at one stack you will automatically regenerate health. At two stacks, your key recovery speed will also increase, and at three stacks, your melee, key, your melee damage will increase which is, is roughly around 30%. Now, finishing flare double A is really good as well since we have high melee key damage as you saw, 53.9%, uh, which is a lot already. But the reason why I didn't go with finishing flare double A is because I really like cleansing prayer buffs. Because not only gives you health back, it also increases your key risk key recovery speed which is really helpful for this build and the melee damage 30% at 3 stacks. Now for ranged weapons honestly it doesn't matter you can go whatever you want as long as you have damage, damage bonus agility A we're good. As our helmet, I decided to go with the Wild Boar Crest helmet because back then I was in the Honda Clan and Honda Clan has the damage taking half on side uh, special effect which it also stacks with our helmet. Right now I'm not running Honda Clan, I'm running uh, Date Clan because I, I wanted to try something else but if you 
if you're going to play with this build with this helmet I highly suggest you to go with Honda to stack the damage health uh, on site. Now uh, star effects increase attack with an enemy really helpful synergizes really well with this build since we are focused on melee key damage every time we are going to leave the enemies without key and anima charge melee attack is really good since where you're going to be attacking you'll be re regenerating anima back now another star effect will be melee key damage or after skill key damage which unfortunately i don't have hope now we can temper that in the blacksmith so if you don't want to go with after skill key damage instead of tempering that you can temper melee key damage our chest uh, our chest is fine it has after skill damage and melee key damage as, uh, as a star effect uh, third star effect will be damage taken if you would like to since we are running almost the full set of veteran set uh, which is really good because he has already a fixed stat of damage taken mid attack. Other than that, I would say that another special effect that is really important is light recovery through Amrita absorption. And of course, don't forget to inherit attack on all your gear. Our gauntlets are honestly they are perfect as they are. Uh, it would be even better if we have a star, a star attack, but unfortunately we don't. But uh, these two uh, star effects are, are great honestly because we have melee key damage and faster movement Omnio, which it synergizes very well with our Guardian Spirit Talisman and our Familiar Talismans. Other than that you can add any any other special special effect that you desire in here i decided to go with attack toughness and tenacity our waste card uh, in here we have melee key damage and damage taken and our graves we have dodge range up and apti skill key damage now our accessories i have jata mirror and i have yasakani magatama now uh, Yata Mirror is not necessary for this build but I decided to go with this one because it has a star melee damage versus zero key enemy and a star sloth omnium magic hit. It will be perfect if we have another star effect which uh, I would prefer to have melee damage versus purified enemy since we are our element is uh, purity but I don't have it. Anyway, I have in here Anima Charge Critical 11.8% which is good and Lucky Drop Accessory. I have this just because I'm hoping that someday I will get a perfect uh, accessory with melee damage versus zero key enemy, the slot Omnio Magic Hit and melee damage versus purified enemy. But if you have another accessory, you can always run another accessory as long as they have melee damage versus zero key enemy or melee damage versus purified enemy and of course if you if you would like to take advantage of sloth sloth is a really good option oh yes a cunning magatama has melee damage versus zero key enemy and melee damage versus purified enemy and as well in this one we have anima charge critical 9.9 .9, which stacks with the one that we have in yata mirror now the good thing about running a magatama is that magatama's uh, have access to life recovery and rate absorption so it also stacks with the one that we have in our chest piece now scroll of the dam I have this one which has a fixed stats ultimate magic and ultimate strength uh, the other special effects you're you're wondering why you have sentience charge well before I explain that uh, uh, we have ultimate courage ultimate courage is really good uh, one of the best ultimates in my opinion so yeah now sentience charge honestly sentience charge is useless for this build because our build is purity we are not using corruption whatsoever however I have it in here because unfortunately I don't have any other scroll so this is scroll that you're seeing it also is being shared by another build that is a corruption build which is going to be shown on the next on, on next time now our magic is pretty much the same that I always use 
nothing different in here now our familiar talismans you can go with whatever you prefer water lightning or fire doesn't matter everything that you're seeing in here is pretty much what i always use our our guardian spirit the main one i decided to go with ho just to take advantage of the melee damage versus purified enemy and purify accumulation enemy eight percent Now, hull is not that mandatory to have as a main, it's just, uh, it depends on you a lot of your choice. But I decided to go with hull because it has 26 attunement, but our secondary option and the most viable one would be Yumehami. Yumehami has melee key damage 20%, which it also stacks with the one that we have. So instead of having 53.9%, we're going to have 73%, which is a lot of key damage. But uh, again, it's up to you, it's, it's whatever you prefer. As I mentioned, I decided to go with Ho because Ho has high attunement cost, which is 26, while Yume Hami only has 21. So fitting some soul cores will be a little bit hard in here, and you have to change your setup of soul cores. Now, uh, as I always use the same soul cores to be completely honest, just because I like to play around confusion, but on this one I'm using something different. The one that I'm using is an Unryoki soul core because it has anima bonus damage taken double A at rank 30 and damage taken mid attack 21.5%. In here I'm using Anima, Yokai Ability Damage All and Max Yokai Ability Damage. Now uh, this Epon is pretty much the same Epon that I'm using on the last build. Same as Yummy, nothing different, it's always the same. Are the best soul cores that I have so why not. Now a secondary Guardian Spirit will be Inosa Sao. You know, so, so I decided to go with this one just to take advantage of the damage taken mid attack 50% and anima bonus damage taken, which is something similar that we have with our hoe, uh, but instead, of course, on Ryoki provides more than Inosa so, Sao. But having Inosa so, so is something good and actually it's a different uh, yokai sheet form as well, which is brute. Uh, really helpful in case if you would like to play around Yokai Shift for a little bit. But yeah, our soul course in here is Avrian Soldier. As you can see, it has Anima man minus one, Attunement cost minus one, Yokai ability damage all. I have Epon, this is different from the other one. Anima, Yokai ability damage brute, and Anima bonus purified enemy. And last soul core that we are playing with is Kasha. Uh, with this cash I have your ability damage all and anima bonus confused enemy. Now uh, this is a personal bias but in case if you don't feel comfortable using a brute uh, uh, a brute yokai ship you can always uh, go with a feral type especially against a uh, nightmare bringer. As you saw on the video at the very beginning uh, nightmare bringer at least for me it's really hard to counter with Brute and uh, with Phantom sometimes it's kind of weird because the timing is needs to be very precise and sometimes it's hard to pull it off so the secondary Guardian Spirit option would be Kurama Tengu and the reason why is because not, not only because it's Feral but also since we are running Isanigi which is a purity build we are going to purify our enemies constantly as you can see, Kurama Tengu has Yoka Ability Damage Purified Enemy, 20%, which is taxed with uh, Yoka Ability Damage All from your Soul Course. Really, really helpful, really powerful as well, if, if you know how to play it around. As you can see, the Soul Cores are pretty much the same ones that I have in within Osa Sao. So, yeah, pretty much we're good to go. So thank you guys for watching, I do really hope you enjoyed this video, if you liked it leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. So see you on the next one, thank you for tuning in, take care everyone, bye bye.